Security. India has now tightened security across the country in a bid to avoid further terrorist attacks that follows new warnings from intelligence agencies. The government has also declared a security alert at major airports in New Delhi, Mumbai and Bangalore. Sun Wei takes a look at that. The high alert comes in the wake of intelligence information that militants from Pakistan or Afghanistan planned attacks as early as this weekend. It comes ahead of the anniversary of the 1992 destruction of a 16th century mosque by Hindu nationalist groups, an event which sparked a violence between Hindus and Muslims. In the nation's capital, New Delhi, security at Indira Gandhi International Airport has been beefed up. Passengers were being frisked and luggage thoroughly checked on Thursday. The security is good. I do not feel that there will be a problem this time. Also on Thursday, Indian Science and Technology Minister Kapil Sibo said that the government is committed to setting up a federal investigation agency to probe cases of terror and other federal crimes. It will be done. This is our commitment. Security is a matter of great national concern. Uh, it is something that the government is exercised by, whatever has happened. And the government wants to convey to the people of this country that we will do all that we can to ensure that their future safety is not jeopardized. Uh, whatever is possible, we shall do. The fallout continued on Thursday with the chief of India's western Maharashtra state announcing his resignation and accepting moral responsibility for the Mumbai attacks. Protesters say the state government failed to prevent the tragedy despite warning from intelligence agencies. Sunwe, CCTV. Now here's the other big story. European travelers stranded in Thailand continue to wait for a flight back home. On Thursday, they listened for news of any services out of Bangkok, one day after anti-government protesters ended their siege. My colleague Mike Patterson brings us this next report. Thai airline officials say Subarnabhumi International Airport is scheduled to reopen for full services on Friday. They say many airlines have already asked to start flying out of the airport. The airport chief also says representatives of the International Civil Aviation Organization, the International Air Transport Association and foreign embassies will visit the airport on Friday to inspect safety and security. Meanwhile, stranded passengers are waiting at a temporary check-in terminal set up in downtown Bangkok. Although the first international flight departing in a week left Bangkok for Sydney on Wednesday, many passengers are disappointed to find out they still have to wait. Uh, the main problem is that we were told yesterday by Thai Airways that there was going to be a flight today to London uh, from the international airport. Uh, we were actually informed to come here six hours before our flight and um, we arrived at the desk and we were told no flight. Meanwhile, Thai Airways and the airport authority are preparing to sue the demonstrators for damages resulting from the occupation of the airports. Officials say legal action will be taken as soon as the damage is assessed. The sieges at Bangkok's international and domestic airports stranded more than 300,000 travelers from around the world. Mike Patterson, CCTV. Well, let's head now to Singapore, where U.S. nuclear negotiator Chris Hill has met for talks with his DPRK counterpart Kim Ki Guan. Thursday's meeting comes ahead of six party talks in Beijing next week. Sun Wei has the details on that. Christopher Hill on Thursday reiterated the position of the U.S. and his partners who are trying to agree on a protocol to verify the DPRK's detailed accounting of its nuclear program submitted in June. Hill said that verification is a key element of the talks. The focus is on making sure the specifics are clearly laid out to avoid any confusion. With regard to verification, which is a key element of the, uh, of the meeting next week, we want to make sure that we have enough specificity in a, uh, in a verification agreement so that as we get on with verification, especially as the, uh, as the disablement uh, phase winds down and we complete disablement and get on to verification, that we don't have any unpleasant surprises in terms of what people are expecting. 
In Seoul, South Korean Foreign Minister Yu Myung-hwan said he hopes the U.S. and the DPRK reach an agreement to move forward with the denuclearization process on the Korean Peninsula. He said the DPRK should first acknowledge the need for testing to check the accuracy of Pyongyang's recent nuclear claims. The important thing is to confirm the guarantee on sampling among the six nations, which is the process of bringing back samples and going through the verification process and securing this on documents. Hill plans to meet again with his DPRK counterpart on Friday before heading to South Korea on Saturday. Pyongyang agreed last year to disable his nuclear reactor in exchange for aid, but negotiations have seen stalled. Sony CCTV. Let's go to an update from the Middle East now, where Israeli security forces have stormed a disputed house in the West Bank city of Hebron. They dragged out 250 settlers who had barricaded themselves inside. Officials say 25 people on both sides were hurt. Thursday's action was the first major West Bank eviction since a violent 2006 confrontation that wounded many people. More than a dozen settler families took over the house in March last year and remained there despite a series of eviction orders. Rioting spread quickly to other parts of the West Bank. Former hostage Ingrid Betancourt has arrived in Peru on the fifth leg of her Latin American tour to thank regional leaders who worked for her safe release from captivity in the jungles of Colombia. She was received by Peruvian President Alan Garcia at the Presidential Palace in Lima on Thursday. Garcia says he backs Chilean President Michel Bachelet, who has nominated Betancourt for the Nobel Peace Prize. A former candidate for the leadership of Colombia, Betancourt holds dual French and Colombian citizenship. She was abducted by FARC rebels in February 2002 and released in a high-profile rescue operation in July of this year. This is Worldwide Watch. Let's go now to our third and final commercial break. We'll be back after this. And the rest of the program just ahead, the European Parliament debates a climate change and energy deal aimed at creating new and greener jobs. And we'll also be moving to Africa where Zimbabwe declares a national emergency, asking for more help to battle a deadly cholera epidemic. <laughs>